And again, that's really cool. And these tricks, you're probably going to use a lot, especially if you're trying to use macros for the JW plugins. So now let's try to create a macro for decrescendo. So I'm just going to delete this, come back over here, and we're going to copy this entire macro and call this hairpins decrescendo. And for this, I like to use X. You can choose something else. That's just what I have historically always used to mean decrescendo. And so now let's just go along through the logic, open up the plugin. Once the plugin is showing, and then we need to change up what is showing over here for the condition, save the mouse position, open up the window. And then after here, we need to select the drop down to be decrescendo and then hit apply and then close. So there are two things we need to change. First, we need to change this setup to specifically be decrescendos. And second, down here, select the drop down for a decrescendo instead of a crescendo. So let's get started. I'm going to come up here to JW plugins and the pattern tool. So JW pattern, open it up to menu window. And now we're going to screenshot it as before just to change the if statement. So command shift four and then space to select the window and then click. Come back over here and then just drag it on top of the if statement. And there you go, it's changed. We're gonna do a, another mouse click after we've opened up the correct hairpin menu. And this one is going to be, as we can measure it, 245 and 75 to select this drop down menu. So 245 and 75. And then we're gonna type a keystroke down arrow. Just the down arrow and then another keystroke Shift Enter to, to select the decrescendo for the drop down menu. So, what it's going to look like is if we have it set up like this, is going to be click, down arrow, Shift Enter. That way we can apply and close. Now, the student of you may be noticing wait a minute, don't these two macros really mess up each other? For instance, if you run decrescendo first, it will, you know, then set it up all the way to be a decrescendo, and there's no way to undo the decrescendo or vice versa, if you do crescendo first and then it looks at the decrescendo, and if it doesn't look like the picture it contains with the decrescendo, it instinctively closes the window and then does useless things and then runs and it just is completely messed up. And the answer is yes, yes it does. Now we can, if we wanted to, code up a macro that takes care of all those if conditions and everything. But seeing as how we're also going to use this plugin to make slurs, so JW pattern, and there's also the performance notation slurs, and we're gonna use it to make slurs like that. That's just a whole lot of patterns to think about, a whole lot of, you know, like opening up which windows, closing which menus, uh, figuring out which dropdown menus to fix, just a whole lot of stuff to do. So you can do that, it'll be really slow to create, and it will be really slow to run. So we're gonna do something a bit faster and quicker, and this is an idea I specifically got from Tim Davies, so a shout out to him. And we're gonna actually duplicate this plugin. You may have noticed already that in the JW plugins, I have a crescendo, which has pattern. I have a decrescendo, which has JW pattern and a slur, which has JW pattern in it. So I have three different copies of this JW pattern plugin. The reason being, I can actually use the macro to select this JW pattern plugin, set it up for crescendo, and that's its only job. So it's set up once, and then we already have all the logic in place and it will run. And the next times it checks, hey, it's already set up, and then just hits apply and close. Same thing with decrescendo. If it's not set up already, sets it up and then runs, and the next time it sees, hey, I'm already set up, hits apply and then close. Same thing with the slur that we're going to create. The first time it says, hey, I'm not set up, it sets it up. The second time it says, hey, I'm already set up, it hits apply and then close. And then all we have to do is have a default starting position or the default starting position for all of these is going to be whatever your original JW pattern is set up as. So I always leave it set up nice and closed and simple like this, and then all our code will work perfectly. So how do we do that? How do we actually create the multiple copies? Well, if you go back here to Finder and where you have the JW plugin installed, all you have to do is create new folders. So I have a slur folder and I have a crescendo and decrescendo folder. Each of these with a copy of the plugin. And you literally can just select the original plugin, control C to copy, create the folder, and then paste. You will have to restart Finale, but once you do that, you will see the plugin in these extra drop-down menus. 
So let's real quickly change this plugin. That way it automatically looks in the decrush menu for decrescendo. And this one automatically looks in the crescendo sub menu. So now if we were to run the plugins, command A, Z, it works automatically. And if you do command and do this one, it works automatically. And this one, it sees I'm already set up, it just applies it. And this one says, I'm already set up, it just applies it. Great, cool, that's exactly what we want. And it's quick and it's simple. And if you apply this to literally an entire ensemble, you can add dynamics really quickly. So last thing before we wrap up this lesson is just creating the same one for slurs. So we're gonna do slurs, S for slur for the hockey. And here we want it to be under slur, like that. We can keep this because that's once the menu is open. We are gonna to have to change these instead of instructions though. Luckily, this set of instructions is really simple to do for slurs because JDB plugins, the actual pattern for this is gonna be just press here for the notation slurs and we don't have to change any of these, hit apply and then close. And so now that we have this set up, we're just gonna create the new image file for the if statement. So command shift four space, that way we can select this dialog box, click to take the screenshot and then come up here and then drag it into the image condition. The button clicks are specifically going to be still 32 cross, but now 128 down. This is a remember for the specific arrow and now to select for the slurs. Still 70 across, and this time it's going to be 164 down. We don't need this third mouse click. We don't need these two keystrokes. All we need to do is return the menu position back, hit apply, then close. So now, if I delete the slur, we create the slurs, control A and then S, and it creates the slur for us. Now lastly, one really cool reason to do it this way is that the plugin automatically checks for repeated notes. So if I were to apply slur here, it wouldn't do one overarching slur. It's actually gonna create two different slurs. So that's it for this lesson. That's how you can create slurs and hairpins with JW Pattern and Keyboard Maestro. I know that was a lot, but you definitely learned a lot about how you can manipulate these non-macro friendly dialog boxes with Keyboard Maestro. And now that you've done it once, it's gonna be a lot easier to think through it and do it later. Like I said, this lesson was all about giving you the tools and you learned a lot and you accomplished a lot. So really give yourself a pat on the back after that lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna keep marching forward and create a bunch of different macros for different clefs so we can apply clefs quickly and easily. Same thing with staff styles. Don't worry, these are gonna be a lot easier than what we just went through, but it is gonna be something incredibly powerful with yet another way of integrating both Finale and Keyboard Maestro. So once you've soaked everything in from this lesson, just click on to the next and I will see you there.